G'day, fellas. And welcome to day number two of week three of your Outback Octagon. Sporting in to the north of the map with two town center cancels after running into Puppy Paw. It's going to be Snooper on the blue playing as the Deli. He's trying to find the best town center spot. But unfortunately for him, well, things aren't going to plan. To the north of him in the red, playing as the English. We've got Puppy Paw. Towards his east, playing on the Abbasid Dynasty, we've got Kaio. Down towards their south, playing in the pink, it is Casper on the English. Immediately next to him, playing as the Rus, it's Divine. And to his south, playing as the Mongols, we've got the Mister, who is representing Vortex, in the orange. Two other players yet to be seen out on this map. Over on the east side of the position, of, of the map rather, we've got Lash, who spawns in as the green Rus player. And to his north, playing as the Abbasid Dynasty, Beastie Cutie. I think that's everybody. I think we got, nope, yep, yep, we got everybody. We've got all six players, so that is going to be it. Now, we're going to have to fix up the chat. Uh, at the moment, you can see chat. It is not moving. Uh, we're, we're, I'm trying my best to to get that. Actually, we, we might... I think we just... We, wit we witness and watch over here on Beastie. He's already got a scout out, so we're just going to follow the scout around. Give me a second here. I'm going to try and fix up this, uh, this chat for you guys. Okay, there we go. I don't know. It, it, it seems to work sometimes. I'm, I'm just watching Snooper. Okay, there we go. Okay, it seems to be working now. All right, there you guys go. So you, you can see up in the top right-hand corner, we are going to have uh, the chat of the game coming through. We're actually sealing it off Snooper's stream. So if you're watching this on YouTube, go give Snooper a big shout-out. Give him some love because he spawned over here between a rock and a hard place and uh, unfortunately for him it's it's a uh, it's not gonna be a quick it's not gonna be a short game it's not gonna be a long game i suspect he's probably gonna have a medium length game here but uh i mean at the moment the big star of the show that we're gonna be focusing on it is going to be the mister you know it's incredibly important for me to see how mister performs here because mister unfortunately he wasn't entered into this tournament because obviously he's got obligations with his farm which you guys would be aware of he is quite the farmer uh, but he did have a little bit of uh, a little bit of time free today, so he came over. He made some time for us actually, because Vortex, Vortex is unable to play today, and so Mister said, "You know what? I'll step in. I'm ha I'm happy to I'm happy to step in for you guys." But uh, we'll take a look up towards the north because that scout of Puppy Paw has been spotted uh, by Kayo, so they know that they are close. In fact, Puppy Paw is very very close. He's on the English here, so he's got a nice little defensive position up here towards the north but the main issue that he's going to have is that he's got multiple people on his flanks and remember that there may be teams there may be alliances that have already built up already been drawn now the big question is going to be who manages to survive past the mid game because there are plenty of resources to be had in the center here now we've seen before that beastie managed to to take away a lot of the relics in the center of the map so the question is whether he's going to be able to do that again up against lash so close now he's going to be aware both players are going to be aware of each other you can see lash actually running past beastie here uh townsend are going to be firing off a few arrows no garrisoning happening just yet uh but at this stage in the game things looking pretty decent for everybody uh interestingly no spawns down towards this south position We've got an entire island that is down here. Obviously, this is mega random. Mega random being a completely random map. No one knows what they're going to get. Uh, and so the consequence of that is that you, you just come into here and you just... Well, you're a little bit clueless. You're a little bit clueless. Let's just put it that way. But uh, let's spot out the Khan because Mister is already going to be denying some of those uh, those Rus hunts. You can see right there, we've got two Rus players, two English players, two Abbasid players, a Mongol and a Delhi player. And I got to say, Mr. Playing on the Mongols, he's going to be really happy with this. I, th I think this is a, a great little victory there for him. You guys will know that Mr. on the Mongols, I mean, it's, it, he's quite a decent Mongol player. Um, so he, he's going to be very happy with that. Um, now, for anybody wondering about the brackets, so we don't actually... Hold on a minute. 
Hold on a minute. So we, we got ourselves a little bit of mutual alliance, a little mutual cooperation over here. Puppy Paw and Snooper, two of the biggest teamers from last week. You guys would have remembered that game that they played. In fact, Beastie was also in that game uh, where some people went to the island. Some people went to an island and, and looked to try and build up a little bit of a safe spot. Well, it looks like it might be the case here once again that we have got ourselves a bit of a team beginning to build. It's going to be the first form of, of mutual cooperation that we are seeing. Now, I can see the chat is is uh, is frozen at the top. I don't know why it keeps doing that. It keeps freezing. It just keeps resetting back to... Yeah, this is this is very strange because I, I guess... I'm just going to keep an eye on that chat at the top because I do want to see any potential chat that gets said between these guys. Uh, I'm going to open it up. Interestingly, no nothing's actually been said between them yet. It seems to be very, very quiet. Remember, we are watching from Snooper's perspective, so uh, if there were any shenanigans, we would know about it. Now, Beastie going to be dropping down his landmark, so it's going to be that House of Wisdom in the back of the base. Take a look at where that has gone. That's gone right back down here, nice and safe away from Lash. He knows that this, this giant threat has spawned right next to him. It's going to be Lash. Uh, and obviously playing the Rus, there's the potential for some sort of early aggression coming out, and we do see the Golden Gate coming out He's decided to go pretty far away from the main town center, though. But I, I mean, to be honest, there's not a lot of good spots for it. He's, he's kind of, kind of packed in here, back, back to this side. Uh, but uh, we'll tune in on the other side. We can see that walls are already beginning to go up. Casper going to be looking to drop down some walls between him and Divine DFP. Wants to make sure that. Uh, that there are no issues. But once again, Divine. I mean, th this is going to be three weeks in the row that Divine gets caught in a really bad starting position. Uh, so, yeah, un unfortunate stuff for him here. A little bit of fishing on the south side as well. Casper going to be doing it up. And Mr. actually grabbing up all of the shorefish here with the Gurs. And I've got to say, now that I think about it, Mongols is a really good pick uh, for for the fact that they can move their Gur. You know, we were talking about this on... Uh, the new map Frisian Marshes that came out. A lot of people theorized that French would be really good on that map just simply because your mills are very cheap. Well, hold on a minute. You can move your mills with with the Mongols. So very easily, Mister's going to be able to, to move his his Gur over here and, and grab all of these shoreline fish. So that's a smart move there. Super smart. He's down here actually harassing the villagers as well of Divine. So it looks like we might have a little bit of mutual cooperation. I mean, I say mutual cooperation, but to be fair, maybe maybe it's not. I mean, Mr. We haven't seen him go for any sort of um, a a aggressive outpost or anything just like that yet. We'll tune, we'll ride on board with him and see how he's doing. Uh, he's, he's got enough resources in the bank to do it, but uh, he might have decided to form a bit of an alliance with Casper early just to clear out the uh, the Deadwood, let's just put it that way. Divine getting caught in between them, a rock and a hard place, but uh, over on the other side, we'll check in with Kaio, we'll see how he's doing because he has also put his House of Wisdom up towards the north, Lash and Snooper also reaching the Feudal Age. And there we see Lash and then Snooper over on that west side, going to be dropping down that Dome of the Faith in the base. Everything going well for Snooper at this point in time, but you can see how close he did spawn to Puppy Paw, but we do believe there to be some sort of mutual agreement. Remember Puppy Paw also playing as the English? Uh, it was it was uh, very easily, or very easy for him to actually go for aggression, but we do see Kaio now looking to be very aggressive with an outpost coming down early, down towards the south. It looks like an outpost does indeed go up here on the south side. Divine is... Under attack, he is under threat. Mr. reaches that second age. And the question is, who goes out first? Who goes out first as we now see a wooden fortress in response to the Mr. Villagers getting focused down here by the outpost. You can see that he's actually just stopped making or just just stopped making his own outpost. He's just putting everybody in in the outpost to get those extra shots off. Khan gonna be moving forward here. Attack speed arrow gonna go off, and he's gonna be careful not to lose that scout. Looks like things at the moment for Divine not going to particularly well. We'll take a look back up towards the north and more outposts continue coming up. Kaio, he's also got the arrow slits up. Puppy Paw also reaches the Feudal H. He's up. Where is that landmark? It is out a little bit further here. Also, dropping down a uh, a mining camp on the stone as well, indicating he might be thinking about going for arrow slits himself or a potential second town center. Towards the south, it looks like a scout is going to be going down. Arrow slits coming through on that outpost. Let's take a look and see where the beastie and whether Lash have gotten any sort of mutual cooperation going. It looks like at the moment it might be a non-aggression pack as both players look to go for a double town center. Normally you'd expect players that spawn this close to not be going for that double town center, but rather to be going for very heavy military. So I suspect they might have had some words and said, hey, you know what? 
Let's not bother with the early aggression. But now it looks like Casper going to be walling himself in very well. We see a second town center also coming up for him. So players looking to play a little bit greedier here. Appreciate that staying on one town center for a super long time isn't going to be of much assistance, especially to your mid or to your late game. But now we'll take a look over towards the north side as more and more outposts continue coming up for Kayo. It seems like Kayo might be a bit of an outpost rusher, but we can see that Puppy Paw going to be responding now. Villagers coming around to drop down to that outpost himself, and a couple of longbows going to be forcing these villagers off the, the stone mine. Going to be careful not to lose that one villager. It's not too healthy. Manages to keep it alive and drops a double stable now in response. Kayo, I mean, he, he has asked for war when he dropped down these outposts, and uh, I, I think Puppy Paw might damn well give it to him. We'll check back in on the south side. At the moment, the aggression seems to be really non-committal at this stage. Mister's just kind of put that outpost up and said, hey, don't come any further than this. And then that's pretty much been it. Realistically, though, we do see an archery range coming up for Divine as well as a blacksmith and a second archery range. So this could be it. Could be thinking about pushing a ram towards this town center for Mister. But remember, one thing I, I will just note for you guys is that Mister playing the Mongols, he can move that town center if he wants to. Enemy is attacking Mister's landmark as well. So we've now got the landmark being attacked by the Arislits, and that's going to encourage Mister to move away from this position. And you can see he's very non-committal to this as well. He's got to be careful, though, if he does try and move the town center not to get surrounded. A whole bunch of villagers could easily surround that town center and look to try and keep it in place. We'll take a look over on the east side of the map. Double town center still coming up for our rules player. Triple town center now for Beastie Cutie. Remember, he's playing as the Abbasid Dynasty. He's going to have that fresh foodstuffs coming in nice and Nice and cheap villagers are going to be the way that he looks to play it here. And more aggression towards that north side. Puppy Paw is looking to try and take out Kaio. Kaio on the one town center for the moment. He was on stone quite heavily. In fact, he's got enough stone to drop a second town center, but it doesn't look like he's done it just yet. Blacksmith also going to be coming up. He's connecting up that, uh, that House of Wisdom network Wi-Fi. Uh, and it doesn't seem like any chat is going on between the players at the moment. Everybody just sort of playing their games, no negotiating. I can actually see that uh, over for uh, for Snooper at the moment, who we're taking the, the chat from, he's actually looking to go into um, going into a uh, into a whatchamacallit, into, into an age up. Uh, so we'll have to look and see how he plays it. Uh, but I've, I've just realized in, in the game, he's actually quite a bit ahead of me. I'm, I'm just going to speed it up right now. Uh, so let, let's speed it up. We're going to speed it up just so that we, we've got it in sync. I think there we go. Uh, let's actually, let's just go live right there. All right, there we go. We're now live. Second town center coming up for Snooper as well. We'll take a look and see. He, he's actually not aged up yet. So I think he's looking for a place to drop down this landmark. That's going to be where it is. Okay, so now we can see the chat. The chat is coming up. I'm going to jump over there. All right, the chat looked pretty good there. I'm happy with how that chat looked. Chat, are you happy with how that chat looked? I saw the chat pop up there. So I'm going to assume that, uh, that, uh, that, that that was fine. All right. So we, we don't have a French player in this game. And so without with, with French not being in the game, see, this is, this is the thing, right? Now I'm looking at the screen. I'm like, I, I know that Snoop is just not looking at that water. It looks frozen to me. And, and this is the thing that, that sort of... Like, I'm getting annoyed about uh, is that it's, it's sitting there. You know what I'm going to do? I think I might just turn it off because it, it, it seems to just be bugging out every, every single time. Okay, there, there we go. It, it, I think it was, might be something to do with... Um, you know what? I'm, I'm just, I'll just leave it like that. Uh, the, the problem is I can't see you guys' Twitch chat. So if there's action happening around the map somewhere, I'm not going to know about it. That's the problem because you guys normally call it out. You're like, hey, go look at this. Hey, go look at that. And the reality is I'm not going to be able to see that anymore. So we can leave it up like that. And then that way you guys get to see the chat. So I do apologize to all you guys watching on YouTube. We're running through some teething issues at the moment. Uh, but uh, we've now got age three coming up for Snooper. Uh, he's added in that compound of the defender. Mister has moved down to the South Island and he's called himself. He's, I mean, he's got an island home. You know, there's a great Australian song because I, I don't know what it's called, but I think it's something like My Island Home. And it basically goes, My Island Home. And that's it. And Mister is currently singing that song because he has called this new island his home. He's the only one down here. There's not actually that many crossings. One, two, three, four crossings by the look of it. Uh, so. Look, it's going to be difficult if he wants to try and go for a wonder. Uh, but hey, at least he's got his own island. Big Wall's now coming in for Snooper as well. He's really looking to try and, and, and take control uh, of, of this uh, this northern side of the map. Uh, but interestingly, him as well as Puppy Paw are working together. Puppy Paw is getting a little bit too close to, for Snooper. And uh, 
I mean, up towards the north, we can see that there's quite a bit of a battle unfolding here. Our English player going up against the Abbasid player. Beastie also reaching the Castle Age. Outpost going to be going down here. The Battering Ram working its way through those mills. Longbows dishing out damage towards those archers, but it looks like there might not be enough spearmen here. They're going to try... Well, actually, I take it back. The spearmen are doing quite well. Uh, Puppy Paul manages to get through all of that, but a good little hold there by Kaio. Definitely demonstrating his prowess, his strength here. But remember, this is the consequence of these early fights, is that if you aren't able to make an alliance with a, a, a close, a nearby neighbor, uh, that the difficult thing for you is that... Oh, were those villagers under attack right there? I think they're idle. That, that's probably why. Uh, but uh, the, the difficult thing that you're going to have is that you're fighting in the early game. And so we can see that Beastie, as well as Lash, have said, hey, man, like, let's just be friends. We don't want to hurt each other. We're close to each other, but let's just call it there. And that's what they've done. Now, look, don't, don't get me wrong. I do suspect someone is going to kill someone eventually. But we'll, we'll see how it plays out. We'll, we'll see. Because remember, coming into this, and this is something that uh, has been a topic of discussion a lot recently, has been the teaming. And how do we deal with the teaming? Because the reality is whether you, whether we like it or not, people will team up. We can make a rule against people teaming up, but it, 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 like, it, okay, as an example, if you've got Casper here, he walls here, and then Snooper walls here, and they just say, yeah, we're just not attacking each other. We're not teaming up. We're just not attacking each other. How do we differentiate that from teaming? Because you could say the exact same thing right here, right? Like, we're just not attacking each other. We, like, okay, th th this, this looks like a very clear teaming, though. Whereas, like, you, you could probably make an argument for the walls here. Um, but, yeah, I, I guess the, the question is, we don't really know how to deal with it just yet. So, well, I'm taking suggestions. If you've got any suggestions, make sure you chuck them down in the YouTube comments uh, and let me know what you think about how, how to do it. But it looks like a second sacred site going to be picked up here by Snooper. We'll take a look and see if we can find all the sacred sites. There's going to be three on this map. So, the first one is over towards the center here. Second one is across the river. So, it's going to be an extra hard hold. Uh, for him and the third sacred site it's up towards the north here which is going to get actually picked up by snooper he's going for the relic first uh, but he's in a great little spot look at the relics that are coming back in this is going to be his fourth relic third and fourth relics that are coming in here lots of scholars out uh hold on a minute hold on hold on a minute hold on a minute wait, wait what are you doing with that <laughs> it's okay when it's in a three-way apparently uh looks like puppy paw I don't think... I, I think he might have just been idling these units here. I, I suspect he might be looking to push this outpost down. But Kayo is definitely aggressive in this early stage of the game. Elephant's going to be coming out. Uh, and, uh, and and we'll see where we go from here. But uh, now Casper, I mean, he, he's dropped down a couple of buildings here. Beastie, actually... Okay. All right. It looks like the non-aggression has ended over on the east of the map as well. We've got Mangonels coming out, Springles coming out, a lot of Spearmen here as well. Beastie's gone with the classic four TCs into death. Uh, and that's not death for him, that's death for his enemy. A lot of production here right now as well. Uh, Lash looking pretty decent. I'm, I'm impressed with the, the size of Lash's base right now. A lot of production here as well for him. Uh, but he is going to be looking to aggress upon Beastie. Uh, we can see that outpost is, is going to be taking uh, quite a few shots here. Uh, he's got villagers here to repair as well. Mango is going to be moving out, and we'll tune back in over on the north side and see exactly what Lash is up to here with Puppy Paw. Or rather, Kaio is up, up to with Puppy Paw. And we can see now the elephants moving out and around. Got to be careful not to get too close to the sun there. Uh, it looks like more elephants might be coming up, so it's going to be that 2v1 situation. And I think this is what, what starts to feel really bad, isn't it? When it's that 2v1. But, uh, I mean, at, at the moment... Uh, sort of, as I was saying a little bit earlier, the thing is that we can't really stop the teaming. So I think it's best to just allow teaming uh, and make it a little bit more open. But I, I think what we've got to do is, because we're not going to be changing the rules for this game, we're not going to be changing the rules for the next game, uh, but we will look to change the rules between the round. And if we do think it's too much of an issue, then we'll try and mitigate it. So whether that means making it so that people don't get points for placements and rather just get points for kills. So I don't know if you guys have watched PUBG, but PUBG, play Unknown Battleground. Uh, it is a game where there's a lot of different... Uh, a lot of different... Oh, we got some chat going on here. Big Yikes says Puppy Paw. Kayo says Sad Face. Oh, yeah. I'd, I'd be doing some sad faces right now too, Kayo. The old 2v1 feels bad, man. But, I mean, this is something that you can you can sort of come to expect when you do spawn between two players. We do see a, a keeper's actually gone up here for Casper, and Casper looking to now aggress upon Divine. So, already, a lot of early aggression now coming out. Up towards the north, we've got a 2v1 that's going to be happening where Snooper and Puppy Paw look to try and take out Kayo and clear out a little bit of space for themselves. Snooper said, yeah, you can snuggle with me for the moment, Puppy Paw, but you're going to have to find your own place by the end of the week. 
And Puppy Port has eyed off this position up towards the north. And keep in mind, he's playing the English. He's still in age two, so he's got plenty of space to drop down those extra landmarks. That's exactly what he's going to want to do. And down towards the south, that keep is going up strong. Looking really, really good. Now, Divine is still stuck in age two. Is he, is he close at all to age three? It doesn't look like it. He's going to have to deal with his keep with rams. And that's going to be a very tough ask because that keep is going to be able to retarget over those rams and look to take it down any of those units. And it's got a very long range. That's the big thing about it. Keep's got an eight, a range of eight. So it's going to be... You, know, you can try and push under here with rams, but the reality is those knights are going to be able to destroy. And now those knights are running into the base of Divine. Divine not looking pretty at the moment. He's spawned in on the rust. Not as comfortable at, of his uh, civilization as, say, the French would be for him. He does like a little bit of the, of the French. Up towards the north, though, we'll check in and see where the players are at. Looks like... Uh, it looks like Snooper, as well as Puppy Paw, uh, dishing out damage. In fact, it looks like only Snooper is up here at the moment. Puppy Paw may have just fallen back. Actually, I take it back. Puppy Paw is right here underneath the town center. A couple of idle rams here as well. Puppy Paw reaching the castle age. Where's he placed that landmark? We'll have to look and see. It's going to be the King's Palace. It's just going to be in the main base. So I re I've got a feeling. I got a feeling. I got a feeling that Puppy Paw is going to put his last landmark down right here in the corner. Uh, I suspect that's going to be the case. Now, I'm, I'm curious. I don't know whether you can, but I don't think you can. If, if this House of Wisdom does go down, I don't think you can build anything on top of it. So basically, it means the best spot up in this corner is still going to be... Uh, no, it's not going to be usable. So the corner is not as good as it once used to be. Let's just put it that way. A couple of... A bit of friendly fire in there. Looked like Spears were chasing the Knights. We'll check you back in over on the south where Divine is under attack. Main town center going to be going down here at this point. And more, more villagers moving to the backside with Casper. I think he might be thinking about an outpost. Maybe even a, a keep. But Kayo surrenders. So he's going to be going down. He's going to be our first player out going down to the team. Wallalo coming in. Unfortunately, it looks like it gets picked off. Lash going to be able to quickly spot that one out. But our first player is going to be Kayo going down uh, to the team of Snooper and Puppy Paw. So already, I mean, Kayo should be in the chat at this point saying they're teaming up, guys. Make sure you take them out. Team, like, it, because when people are teaming up, that's really, you know, that, that's something that you should be focusing on. That's something that you should be thinking about. And now we see Divine going down over on this eastern flank. We'll change over to Casper's perspective and see what he's up to because he's actually going to Imperial right now. Casper not only killing his enemy, but also booming behind this. A beautiful base from Casper as well. Look at this beautiful base. Very well thought out. We'll look and see whether we can find that last landmark. And it's, oh, oh, he's going for a Barkshire Palace at the back. Look at this. The Barkshire Palace is going to be coming down here. And it looks like Divine is going to be kicked out. He's going to be our second player out today. Beastie's landmark going down. Oh, no. Oh, no. We might have a bit of an upset early on in this game. Beastie currently the point leader uh, at the end of round two. And he's going up against Lash here. And Lash has got quite a formidable army here. A lot of Springles. Beastie still at the moment in age three. Uh, and uh, he's going to look to defend against Lash, who's also in age three. We'll, we'll ride on board with them and see where they're up. At right now, 200 and 200 for Lash. We'll take a look at Beastie and see how he's doing. 194 of 200. So both players with some pretty formidable armies here. Uh, Beastie on 122 villages. Compare that over to Lash. He's sitting on how many villages? 119. So pretty even Stevens at this point in time. Uh, some decent number, decent uh, military here, though. Crossbow, men at arms, together with the Springles. Going to be very difficult to, to beat that back. But now the veteran archers move out for Beasties, making a lot of siege back on the, on the other side. Archers coming in. They've got to be careful not to, not to fall down to those men at arms on the front. They're trying to pick up the crossbows, not having a whole lot of luck. And Beastie in a really difficult position now. Now, keep in mind, he's got that House of Wisdom all the way in the back. So even in the event that uh, that Lash looks to push him out, he's not going to be able to finish him off too quickly. He's going to need... It's going to be a slow but steady push. And so with that, we now see in the north of the map that Puppy Paw has gone for the Wingard Palace, and he has indeed put it down right at the back here, opting for this position. I thought he would have gone for here, but this one makes sense as well. And we also see a town center coming up here for Snooper as well. So we have got two players in bed with each other. It seems like Snooper was letting Puppy Paw sleep over, but in reality, it was Puppy Paw all along whose house it was. But now we see over towards the west side of the map. We'll take a look and see exactly what Snoop is going to be doing uh, and, and see what he's up to. Wallalo. Wallalo coming down in the north. Snoop is going to be taking a whole bunch of villagers here. 19 villagers on that side. Snoop just picks up... Snooper picks up... How many villages is that? Snooper right now. What a smart move there from Snooper. Snooper going to be taking 19 villages here uh, from his opponent. And there's a whole bunch more villages here as well. And so th this is twofold advantage. So the first advantage to this is not only does your villager count uh, increase uh, by doing this, 
but you're also reducing the village account of the white AI that's going to continue chopping away at your own resources. So if you if you want to kill those, go for it. If you want to convert them, go for it. Smart moves either way. And very smart moves there from Snooper. I wouldn't be surprised to see him bring out another relic and look to take the rest of those villages as well. In the center, we did hear the sacred site for Beastie getting picked up. Looks like he's going to be careful with that scholar. Scholar was uh, was getting caught with its pants down. We hear the age up coming through as well for Snooper. So it definitely... Oh my lord, look at this. We've got three landmarks all wrapped up next to each other. Hussar Academy, Wingard Palace, and the House of Wisdom in the corner. If, the, if that ain't a team, I don't know what it is. But look at this. Casper says, hey, I had enough of you damn, you damn fellas teaming up. I'm coming through there. I'm going to break it apart. We'll see exactly what he looks to do. But... Uh, but over on that eastern flank, you can see Beastie's actually under some significant pressure. He's managed to hold on for the moment, still sitting in age three. We'll ride on board with him for a little bit. He's got a lot of stone in the bank, just under 4,000 stone. So he's going to be able to drop plenty of keeps in the event that he needs to up towards the north. Villagers just... Yeah, you can see the villagers are now focusing down the white villagers. Wallalo going to be coming down here in the center. He manages to pick off all of those knights. Knights have broken through. Casper now coming in to the base of Snooper. Also heading into the base of Puppy Paw, and he says, hey, we need to interrupt this right now, mister. I don't know where you are, buddy, but I need you. I need you up here. We got to stop this. And then that becomes the alliance. Is that what happens? Do we have a whole bunch of 2v2v2s that are happening? And you can see the way that right now Casper is diving. All these elite knights just running into the base. They've got full upgrades as well. Biology. They've got all their plus threes, ex with the exception of the, the melee armor. And Beastie continues to get pushed back. Lash doing a beautiful job here right now. Lash, for anybody unaware, currently sits on the ladder, I think at about rank 100, maybe rank 150. Uh, but definitely do not count him out in this situation. By the same token, Beastie looking to hold on. You can see he's sitting at 166 population at the moment. He's just clicked the age up button, so might be able to move into bombards or something like that. We'll have to wait and see how he plays it, but uh, now those trebuchets are going to begin rolling out. A lot of knights in here uh, for Casper. He is looking to cause havoc in the base. And this, isn't, this, is, this is just something poetically beautiful. You know, Kaio gets knocked out, and then Casper says, hey, you guys want to You guys want a 2v1? Let's do it. I'll, I'll happily be the one versus two. And he takes it, and he takes the fight, and he's doing very well. He's cleaning up a lot of units here, forcing out away for all these villagers away as well. Back towards the base of Beastie. Things not looking pretty. We'll check in with the Mister and see how he's doing because Mister is absolutely gearing up for the late game. We've got the prayer tent down. He's going to be able to get that uh, that double production there on each of those buildings. And he's expanding out with outposts as well. So we'll tune in with him in a little bit and see exactly how he goes. But there we go. The Hussar Academy is down. The Wingard Palace is down. We got all three of these landmarks up towards the corner. Uh, it, is, it is a thing of beauty, isn't it? It really is. Uh, villages here have actually gone idle. I don't know what caused these villages to go idle, uh, but very interesting. Those knights continuing just to run havoc right now through the base. Casper doing a great job. And keep in mind that with Casper doing this... Uh, oh, oh, oh my lord. Oh my lord. We got, a, we got ourselves a little bit of a battle down here as the elephants continue to push through. Hand cannoneers, keep in mind, Casper's obviously in the Imperial Age. Elephants become a lot less relevant in Imperial because of these hand cannoneers. A lot of knights looking to fight out here with the lancers. Lancers still let, yet to get their elite upgrades. It's going to take some time for Snoopy to get those upgrades. He is playing as the Delhi. He continues falling back. We've got a keep that did get dropped down by Beastie. He's managed to, to hold it down. But three trebuchets are going to be distracted and, and come back towards this. Keep in mind the high trade house is here on 204 gold. This is the equivalent of about two relics. Now, this is, this is a smart move from Beastie. What he's trying to do is delay Lash here. He's trying to force away from that, that push from coming out. And that's exactly what he does. Because remember, if that trebuchet, or if these trebuchets are down here, like, what, realistically, what was this keep doing? This keep was attacking the high trade house. You can easily move these villages just down here. And by bringing these three trebuchets back, Lash has now delayed his push. It means that all of these buildings here for Beastie stay alive. So this is a great tactic. And Lash interestingly goes for a little bit of a dancing springle now this is a more advanced strategy i would recommend it for players that are conqueror and above so at the moment it's about 60 percent of you guys congratulations uh but yeah it's a very advanced strategy uh Oh my lord, the Wallalols going down. If, you've, if you're worried, you're worried about a shortage of Wallalols in this game, do not be worried anymore. All of those relics getting picked up. Going to be dropped back in nice and safely, I hope. I hope. I hope. All right, there we go. All five relics jumping back in there. Uh, he could actually... I mean, if he if, if he was thinking about it, he could actually... He could 100% uh, look to try and take that out. And that's exactly what he does. The trebuchet is going to be looking to focus that down. He could even come in here for a potential relic. Yoink. Uh, that, that would always be an option for him. But now Beastie under attack once again in the middle. 
We do see it. It says Landmark under attack. Now, I don't know whether that was for Beastie. I'm not sure who, who's indicated that was, but we might have ourselves a little bit of an early upset here. Beastie Cutie, one of the favorites for the tournament, may potentially be knocked out here early on in this game against a player who he thought maybe was going to be a little bit more passive. We could see in the early stages of the game that Beastie and Lash were relatively friendly towards each other. It was the classic four TCs into, into you know, into making military units, but... Today, it seems like there might be a little bit of an upset. Now, it looks like the, the push from Casper is still very strong here. We see the first landmark is going to be going down. Now, going to be starting to work here on this, this mosque. And it's going to take all of the relics. The ball alone is going to be coming out. There's no way. There's no way he goes for it. A couple of the knights... Only one of them going to be swayed and he's going to sprint away with those remaining relics. A smart move from him to do that. He's managed to take away three of the relics. He says, oh, get back here. Don't you go anywhere. But that push down towards the south continues aggressing. Numbers here for Mister. I mean, we got to check in on Mister. we got to see what he's up to right now because I'm getting worried. Mister is sitting down here uncontested. He's on 129 economic population at the moment. A little bit of a raid coming down on the south side. Mister and Beastie might have all of a sudden formed a bit of an alliance. Beastie now going to be dropping down another keep down here. Mister coming in with a raid. But Lash, you just focus. Keep your eyes on the prize, Lash. Keep your eye on the prize. No, Lash. Oh, my Lord. And you can see him moving back right now. We hear another landmark is being destroyed. Lash's landmark goes down. Oh my lord, Lash's landmark goes down. Mister has Oh my lord, it's 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 incredible. Now we've got a 2v1 over here. Just when it looked like Beastie might have gone out, all of a sudden it looks like Lash might be in trouble as Mister brings it back in. But now we're gonna head back over towards this west side. Keep in mind that on the on this part of the map, Snooper remains. He's got three landmarks. Two of them have been taken down, okay? He's got the first one and second one taken down. Third one is over here. Fourth one tucked away safely in the back here. But remember, there are no walls between this. In the event that Casper knows or realizes about that landmark in the back, he could run through a whole bunch of knights and look to take that out. Emergency keep going to be thrown down by Lash. Keep in mind, he's got those one, two landmarks. We'll look to see if we can find that fourth landmark because he is in Imperial now. Uh, we'll, we'll see if we can find it. I suspect it's... Yeah, there it is. It's the high armory. It was on my screen the whole time. Uh, enemy landmark destroyed. More landmarks going down. And now you've you've awoken the Mongol, mister. Mister is out. He's looking to clean up all of these villages. Uh, and, uh, and I mean, things things are now getting spicy, aren't they? Things are starting to get really, really spicy. It, it, it looks like at this point, Casper's base is very big. Like a, a significantly big base. Uh... I like his position here as well. This is going to be a great little spot for him to drop down a wonder in the event that he wants to. So he's in a really decent spot. He's going to continue pushing through. We can see him just dishing out damage, just focusing on production, ignoring everything else. He says, you can keep your houses. You can keep everything. You can keep all the other buildings. Just I'm going to focus on your production. Or at least he says that for the English player. And now those hand cannon is moving through. Casper actually going for a 1v2 here and doing it very successfully. Knight's moving through. Casper actually 2v1ing here. Unironically, Casper is going ham. This is insane stuff from Casper. You thought teaming was the meta. No. Taking on teams is now the meta. 2v1 Casper, the big boy. Oh my lord, I'm so impressed with Casper right now. But. Speaking of impressions, Mister is making a solid impression on this south side of the map. It, it seems like Lash has has been held on or, or been forced back away from this. Now Beastie has said, oh, you came for me, buddy. And now, now you've upset me. And he looks to take down his enemy, his rival. He needed a little bit of help out here from, from Mister, but it looks like someone attack Casper, please. It's a good time for it. Eternally grateful. <laughs> That's what Puppy Paw says. Keep in mind, Puppy Paw is teamed up with, <laughs> with Snooper. Oh my God, these guys. We'll have to see if Mister looks for it, whether he goes in for it. Now, th this is one of the things that we've seen players do. Enemy destroyed Puppy Paw's landmark. There it goes. Puppy Paw's landmark is going down. It's Casper that is destroying it. We'll take a look and see whether we can spot. It's not these ones in the back. They're the main ones that we've got to be focused on. It's going to be, I think, the, the, the landmarks towards the front. Indeed, it is. It's going to be that main town center, potentially. Nope. I'm, I don't know which landmark it was. The King's Palace, uh, which is slowly getting healed up. I, isn't that just hilarious that the teamer is 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 saying, somebody help me. They're, they're killing me. Oh, they're killing me. It's like, yeah, well, you teamed up against Kaio, didn't you? And the second landmark is going to be going down now. Casper is looking like an absolute beast in this game. Just taking on Puppy Poor and Snooper. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. It is so brilliant to watch. Uh, the one thing I'm, I'm fearful of is a bit of a, a, a Mongol 
backpedal potentially we saw in the early stages that uh that mister was was fighting up against uh, divine and that caspar was helping him out a little bit but for the moment it seems like mister has not heard the calls he has not listened to the calls to attack caspar he's just chilling out at the moment being chilling right now streltzy moving forward together looking to try and take out a lot of these bombards you can see them moving forward he's going to be able to take out the first of the culverin continuing the push through now now remember we'll, we'll take we'll take a look at beastie and see exactly how he's doing but i, I just want to check in on casper again i'm always going to be looking to check in on these landmarks at the back and remember that uh that what is he clearing out is he is he attacking snooper have we got ourselves a little bit of friendly fire over here still more trebuchets casper just looking like an absolute beast right now we got to ride on board with him oh, and th this is just classic english play isn't it you know the the, the 14 000 food stacked up 2v1ing like nothing says english late game like 1v2ing like th that is just very typical english late game right now he's continuing to tread down everything inside over on that eastern front though it looks like players have gone their separate ways at least for the moment beastie not gonna be knocked out too early in this game very fortunately for him Cat of uh, mr came to his rescue it seems like this free-for-all is a little bit more free than most free-for-alls, or at least the recent ones. There, there were some early signs of teaming, but all of a sudden, Caspar is dishing out the punishment. You mess with the bull, you get the horns, and it seems like Caspar is very, very horny. <laughs> Caspar is very horny right now. He is horny for 2v1. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh look this is a family friendly channel i apologize for any of these jokes that i'm making in advance uh, i can't help it it's it, it's the consequence of having a dirty mind isn't it but uh but now this push gonna keep coming through casper now looking to dish out plenty of damage here just running in non-stop gonna be taking out trebuchets thing not things not looking good for puppy paw things not looking good for snooper right now main town center gonna be going down as well puppy paw is looking to really dish out uh, we'll, we'll try and hold on here. We see those trebuchet boulders just being thrown in and Caspar just doing such an amazing job of pushing out this two-player team at the north. What a move by him. Now he's, now we've got some walls coming up. He, you know, I, I think Beastie might be suspecting that they, they, there might be a potential migration coming through here. And obviously he wants to stop that. He wants to prevent it. Walls from Snooper as well. Caspar. Oh, look at Caspar. He's like, there's no migration, my friends. You guys are staying locked in. He brings the galley over. He is stopping this. It is the ultimate free-for-all play here. Caspar is just pushing in absolutely hard. He's been cleaned up for the most part on this backside, but now running through, Knight's continuing, and he's found the landmarks now. He knows where those last landmarks are. This could be huge for Casper here. Villager's going to be looking to escape. He's just causing mass damage on the on the backside here. Found the farms. Knight's running through. I think, I, I, I actually think Casper might win this 2v1. I genuinely think, oh, oh no! Oh no, Snooper's coming on the backside. Huge amount of damage coming in. All of a sudden, Snooper says, hey mate, how you doing? Now, keep in mind the score here for Casper. It's about the same as Puppy Paw and Snooper together. So things do uh, are, are genuinely quite even. Interestingly, Snooper doesn't go for the Trebs. In this position, you'd normally think that the Trebuchets would be the best target because that's where the majority of the push is. But you can see that the damage that's coming out on the backside, Wingard Palace. Wingard Palace is being attacked right now. This is this is not good for Puppy Paw. Let's take a, a quick look at the landmarks. Hold on, Casper is a, is a bully who is very rich. Yo, Mr. Casper's pretty big threat. Oh, props should help. I'm about to you. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, geez, Louise. These guys are hilarious. They are doing everything that they can to try and win right now. We can see the Casper's on the four landmarks. Puppy Paw on one. Snooper on one. These are their last two landmarks right here on our screens right now. Things are not looking good for these two teamers. Teamers get what they deserve at the end of the day and it looks like casper is going to be the judge he's going to be the executioner but we might have some problems we might have some problems because just when it looked like casper might be going in for a big attack he has whispered his ear has been whispered mister has been called upon and once again mister who was once the hero of the people now looks to be potentially uh, what's the opposite of a hero the bad guy <laughs> he kept the favorite alive over here beastie i mean beastie was dying he called upon beastie beastie said P please help me please help me mister and mister heard that call mister heard that call and now <laughs> now he's gonna clear out this this abbey of the trinity but now all of a sudden down towards the south side oh it's completely open it's all open as well and these these are elite knights you you have to you have to like you, you can't ignore these 
You cannot ignore them. And now the push really coming through. We can see a couple of veteran spearmen in here as well. We'll have to watch and wait and see how Mister goes. And whether he looks to to go to bite this, ideally Casper should be saying, "I'm not a threat. I'm just taking out the the team here towards the north." Now, up towards this position, we can see that the Wingard's down at 3,600 health. The Hussar Academy on 4,900 health. And Kasper is really pushing in a lot of hand cannoneers here, looking to hold on. The night numbers starting to, to look a little bit thin, but more reinforcements are coming in here for him. Down towards the south, we hear an attack is going to be coming through. Kasper does see this, and the question is whether Kasper goes back. Now, kasper has got a big economy behind this. If he looks to try... Oh, 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 mister has all of a sudden realized that Kasper might be a big threat here. Casper may be a threat. Uh, the score for Mister's looking pretty healthy, though. He's sitting on 17,000. Really the only one yet to be involved or attacked in any big battle. So he's looking good. But now Casper... Casper... I, I think Casper knows that he can be, he can just come in and push and kill. And he should be okay. Ideally, Casper... I mean, he's probably going to do the math. Enemy destroyed Casper's landmark. So there we go. We, we do see Casper's landmarks are going down. I don't actually see where it is. It was in blue. Snooper? Wait. Oh, Snooper's going for a snipes. Oh my lord, Snooper's going for a snipe. No, not Casper. He was the hero of the people. You can't do Casper like that. Casper loses the council hall. Second town center going to be going down here as well. He's got the white tower up towards the north and at the same time overall on the backside, we've got the Barkshire Palace. It's going to be a little bit of a race. I think we might have a bit of a base trade coming in. The trebuchet is moving through. Then they're completely ignoring all the archery rangers. I think he might be coming straight for this Hosar Academy. He knows that if he doesn't, that he's going to be losing his own life. So it's a battle to the edge. And now we also see that the, that the council hall goes down. So two landmarks going to be going down here. At the same time, Mister is just being chilling right now like John Cena. All of these pink units are going to be moving in. Casper going to be trying to hold on. The trebuchet is going to begin to unfold. Let's see which landmark he goes for. It looks like it's going to be the Wingard Palace. He's targeting down first. No, he decides against it. He says, no, guys. Everyone focus down the Hussar Academy. All of the forces now going to be coming through. There doesn't seem like there's a lot of units down towards the south. There's more villages here. But remember that at the end of the day, if you lose the landmarks, that's it. You're going to just lose the game. And now the landmarks, the Hussar Academy, focus down. We see more and more units running in here. Mister is looking to try and cause havoc. The White Tower, it's been it's been found out, but there is boiling oil and there are keeps here to protect it. Back towards the north side, it looks like the Hussar Academy is going to be getting repaired up. Things are not going well right now for Snooper. As he says, fuck, in the chat, he's not a happy camper. He's not a happy camper and he's not a happy teamer as well. Things are not looking good for him as it looks like the final landmark is going to be going down here back towards the south side. Berkshire is walled in completely. There's no way you're taking that bad boy out. And with that, Snooper, the first of the teaming two, gets knocked out. See you later, mate. The Australian sensation is going to be going down, going to be going home. See you, mate. Good try. And with that... Casper comes through, the hero of the people to take down the teamers. The Wingard Palace gets focused down next. He says goodnight, sweet prince. And next up is you, puppy paw. The chopping block gets loaded up and with that gets taken out. Good night, sweet prince. There is two for Casper on the board. Beautiful stuff right there from Casper. But back towards his base, there is more havoc continuing to unfold as Casper takes out two of the top players right now in a huge battle because that was a team that he takes out right there. That is so big. I can't underestimate or can't understate how big that is. Casper, the, I, oh my Lord, Casper. You impressed me. You impressed me greatly, my friend. Uh, but it looks like the main town center for Beastie did once again get taken out by the trebuchets. This war between Beastie and Lash continues to unfold. Uh, but it looks like the score difference has now begun to eclipse uh, Lash. So Beastie has now got the upper hand with regard to score. Oh my lord, I can't believe that. Alright, we're going to make sure that we get the uh, the, the rest of this uh, this off, off the screen. Unfortunately, Snooper was our chat guy. Uh, so now, all of a sudden, we don't have access to chat anymore. So I'm going to make sure that we get that one off. Uh, I'm going to pull you guys up so I can see you guys. Hey, Twitch chat, how you guys doing? It's been a while since I've seen you guys, but... Uh things are looking good, eh? Things are looking good, Casper. Not too bad, eh? The old 2v1, eh? Up towards the north, it looks like Casper is looking for next targets. Uh, now, it seems like he may have come to some sort of agreement with Mister. Like, hey, bro, they dead. They are dead. Uh, th th you're not going to achieve anything over here, mate. So the question is, where does he go from here? Because he he's got quite the force. Now, Beastie has begun trading. 191 gold for him. Trade post up towards the north. Things are starting to heat up now. Because Beastie, I mean, he's in prime position. Do not underestimate this guy. He's got a great little spot back here for a wonder in the event that he wants to do it. And I know that you guys want to see chat, but the reality is, unfortunately for Snooper, he's been knocked out now, and I think he might, may have closed the game. Uh, so it means that we're not going to be able to see that Twitch chat. 
Uh, now, just give me a sec. We're going to follow along with some of Mr.'s units here. It's getting hot in my room. I'm going to have to open up my door. Uh, I've got the heater on. It is real hot. All right, we're back. We're back. Now, I, I don't know. Did, was, <laughs> did the only Lancer that went down, was that the one that I was following? <laughs> I think I think that's the only the only lance up uh, that I was following was the one that went down. That feels bad, man. Feels bad. Apparently, apparently Snooper is still in the game. All right, give me a sec here. We're gonna we're gonna go check. Uh, I'm gonna jump across. Give me a sec. Let's see if we can get it back on the board. Uh, all right. Okay, we'll, we'll leave it up for now. I don't know whether we're going to see anything, though. I don't know whether we're going to see anything. All right. Okay. So you guys have got chat back. I don't know if anything's going to come up. I, I've actually got Snooper's stream up on my monitor at the moment, so I'll be able to see chat as well. I, I won't be able to see you guys, uh, but I will be able to see Twitch chat. So things have chilled out now. I mean, we, we let's do a bit of a stock take. Let's see where we're up to, because... I mean, we're already down to our final four. You know, it's very early in the game and things are starting to look a little bit interesting. Now, Beastie is trading. Now, I don't know whether this has been called out in the chat right now, uh, but uh, but Mr. seems intent on interrupting some trade up towards the north. Mr. also going to be cleaning up villages here. Uh, now, we're going to have to scroll that chat down a little bit. Give me a second here. Uh, let's see if we can do... Like, maybe that? I'm, I'm not sure if that's going to work. Hopefully that works, but yeah, the, the, the chat seems to disappear very, very quickly. Mister has now interrupted this trade up towards the north. And once again, I apologize to you guys on YouTube. I know you guys are here for the seamless effort, but the reality is, is that we're, we're trying to make it, we're, we're trying to make do with the best that we can. Okay, here we, there we go. All right, there we go. Uh, oh God. Uh... Oh, 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 Casper, help. Sorry, guys. I know. I'm, I, the, 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 pro, the reason why I have to resize everything is because the chat now displays in a different place because, uh, unfortunately, our uh, Snooper has died. Up towards the north, it looks like a whole bunch of outposts are going to be dropped down here. I'm not sure what the intention is there behind that. They're going to kill you next, Casper. <laughs> oh, no. Look at the, the... Now we've got ourselves a bit of a team beginning to build up. Beastie knows he, he might be under threat. Let, okay, so let's let's ride on board with these guys and see where they're at. So we've got Casper over in the west. He's got his four landmarks back that have been rebuilt. No, no, they haven't. Uh, so his main landmark, that, that's the main one. Uh, the Berkshire Palace. Going to be safe down here. Trade is now beginning as well. Five trade. Oh my God, this is going to be big. It's not that big. It's 163. You, you would have thought it would have been a little bit bigger than that. 163 gold coming in for Casper at the moment from, from his trade. Now, English typically don't need to trade uh, just simply because they get so much gold from their uh, their farms. But obviously, Casper wants to rebalance that eco. Once he gets up to 100,000 food, he's not going to be able to have any more food. Uh, so that's going to be a big factor for him. Let's tune in with our next player and see how he's doing. It's going to be the Mister. So the Mister down towards the south. A lot of resources stacked up as any typical Mongol player would have. These guys love to keep all of their resources stacked up nicely. Uh, and Beastie saying in the chat, they are 2v1ing me, help or you are next. And you can see that even though the me the recent messages are coming up, I am killing Beastie Eco, go kill Beastie Casper. Nice news, <laughs> look at Casper. Oh, Casper was AFK, He's just he said back. But he, he did say, uh, nice news. I like it that he, he's treating it like, hey man, yeah, like that, that's a good news update. Keep it coming. Like You, you guys let me know how you go. I, I just dealt with a 1v2 over here. So you guys keep doing... You guys keep doing your work, all right? So we'll check in with, with Mr. and see how he's doing. Main town center. Actually, that's not the main town center. Uh, we'll, we'll have a look at the landmarks. We've got White Stupor here. Main town center here. So everything looking pretty safe for him. He's probably got the deer stones down to a corner somewhere. I can't really see it. There's a lot, lot of stuff going on on the map. Step it out in the middle here as well. And more attacks are coming through. But remember, there's a lot of bombards as well uh, for him. Uh, I did see a whole bunch of bombards. There they are. There's one. There, there's the rest. All right, so our next player, it is going to be Lash, who's over towards the east. Still not a lot going on for Lash, and you can see his economy is looking like it's in a, a dire, dire situation. 
If I, if I had to put my money on anybody going out next, it would be Lash, just simply because of his economy. Uh, but, I mean, he's slowly rebuilding. He's got seven villagers in queue, a whole bunch of Streltsy. All of his landmarks together in a row, which are never going to be a... Actually, that's one, two landmarks in a row. That's that's his main town center there. And the great the high trade house, uh, it's, it's down a little bit further. But all the landmarks very close together. And that's typically a big factor. When it comes to these free-for-all games, it definitely seems like if you can... If you can put a landmark a little bit further away, then you can try and buy yourself a bit of time. We did see that up towards the north. Uh, but we're right on board with our last player. It's going to be Beastie. Things not looking good for Beastie either. Look at this, 132 population, a whole bunch of elite horsemen together with some elite camel archers going to be coming out. And Beastie under attack, unironically. He's, and this is the problem, right? Beastie is now the boy who cried wolf. Beastie is, for anybody who doesn't know the boy who cried wolf. So essentially, there was a boy, he went out into the forest, and he, he, he screamed out, wolf, wolf, and everybody came and helped him, and there was no wolf. And then the next day, he went out into the forest, and he cried, wolf, wolf, and nobody, uh, and everyone came to help him, and there was no wolf. And then finally, on the third day, he went out into the forest, and he, he ran into a wolf. And he screamed out, wolf, wolf, and nobody came to help him. And you want to know why? Because he cried, wolf. And so the problem is, right now for Beastie, is that once upon a time, he said three famous words. Wham is trading. He said that when Wham had two traders, so technically he was telling the truth, but he was not the threat. The threat, he, or rather, Wham was not the threat. Beastie was the threat because Beastie had a wonder. And those three words are words that are seared into the brains of many people here that play free for all. And they know how dangerous it is to trust the words of somebody who is fluent in parcel tongue. Beastie is an incredibly strong player, and he is a great, he has a great ability to manipulate people into doing the things that he wants in these games. And that is a real skill, especially in these free-for-alls. That is a huge skill to be able to do that. But the problem is now that he is under attack from multiple people. We see Casper over here. We also saw uh, down towards the south side, Mister. And these two are the strongest players by far. And the thing is, they don't know how strong Beastie is. We know the truth. We know that Beastie right now sits on 69 economic units, 68 military units. One is one of those numbers is nice. The other one, not so much. But Beastie definitely seems to have been the boy who cried wolf in this game today. More units waiting to reinforce. We can see that the Golden Age has now been activated. The final House of Wisdom standing on the backside. Beastie really unable to stabilize. And this is the consequence of spawning so close to Lash. And so you really start to ask these questions, right? So as an example, Beastie went four TCs into a, 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 a push on his enemy, Lash. And Lash did something similar. Now, my question is, if, if he had gone and just played really aggressive, you know, like played, I, I don't know, like maybe some sort of archer spearman push, would have things been different for him? Would have he been able to push in, kill Lash, and then boom behind it with all the space in the world? Probably. Probably. But now, unfortunately for Beastie, things are not looking pretty. He's holding on pretty well. Culverin just dishing out damage. He's got how many? He's got nine Culverin here. These guys are holding on like crazy. Uh, you know, in, in the patch notes, they said they're buffing up the Culverin damage by 10, like the base damage by 10. I was like, are you guys serious? Like, these things already fuck. Like, now they're just going to fuck even more. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, at, at this point in time, Beastie is in a bit of a bad spot. He is on 150 population, economy in absolute shambles, 75 villages now for him. He's got a pretty decent little hold in this position here. It's going to be tough to push in against this, just because the camels are going to reduce the, the damage of the cavalry units when they try to come in. The main thing that's going to really hurt him is just a, a cohesive push. If bombards and trebuchets and spearmen and hand cannoneers together with knights come out, that's going to be something that's difficult for him to deal with. Uh, just simply because the Culverin aren't going to have the range uh, to deal with that. All right, well, we'll take a look and see the rest of the map and see how things are progressing because guess what? Casper is trading. He's got two... Oh, my Lord, 293 on that bad boy. I don't know what Casper did, but he suddenly woke up. Uh, we'll take a look at his... Uh, he's got 50 traders at the moment, so not all of them are trading to the same market. Ideally, every trader should be trading to this market. This should be the home market for all of the traders. Uh, so some of these are going to be getting in only 163. Some of these are going to be pulling in. That one's also got 163. But some of them are going to be pulling in some pretty big numbers. 163 there. This guy, very curious. This guy here, 163 as well. I'm not sure exactly why there's so many 163s. Okay, here we go. 320. 307. 
So you can see the difference. Just by going to this market here, you're only you're getting half of what you could be getting over here. So that's where the big difference is. But now back over towards the other side of the map. Casper finally waking up with the hand cannon is the culverin gonna be coming out here, looking to snipe away some of those trebuchets, doing a decent job. We see that Mister is now gonna be looking to capture a sacred site in the middle of the map as well, coming out here. There's gonna be a keep that once existed uh, from his opponent. It looks like it was a snooper keep, uh, but uh, not gonna be the case here anymore. Hand cannoneers, uh, unfortunately, don't do the don't do that well when they are sieging. Uh, but Beastie managing to hold on. We'll take a look at how Lash is doing. Lash's army just absolutely huge at this point. A lot of sprinkles, a lot of Streltsy in here. This is basically like the, the perfect army. He's got the roller shutter triggers as well as banded arms, which means he's going to have more range than the Culverin. Mister now capturing up that first sacred site. Second sacred site held currently by Beastie. Third sacred site towards the north. It has been neutralized. No one currently holds it at this point. Kaspar, his, uh, his resource bank is looking very healthy. So at this point in time, there are two runaway players, Kaspar as well as Mister. Mister definitely seems to be a very or in a very, very good position here. Uh, we'll ride on board and check in with Lash and see how he's doing. His economy is starting to pick up a little bit, and he's on 650 bounty, which is a pretty damn good amount. Uh, he's going to be bringing back some villagers here. Uh, Lash definitely... Uh, it, it's interesting because as soon as I spectated Lash, I'm like, oh, okay, Lash is definitely going to get knocked out next. But then all of a sudden, uh, we spectated Beastie, and we're like, hold on a minute. But uh, now Casper going to be coming in for Lash here. Uh, it looks like Beastie's score is still quite a bit higher than Lash's, so that could be deceiving people. In fact, Casper's score is lo is lower than Beastie's right now. Take a look at that. Beastie up 100 points over Casper. So it, it can be very difficult to gauge a person's position. And I think Abbasid players in particular have this problem. It only seems to be Abbasid players. I don't know why. They seem to overscore in the late game by a lot. So Beastie right now, not even max population, less than 10,000 resources in the bank. Compare that over to Casper, who has got 65,000 food, 6,000 wood, 7,000 gold. Still not max population, but you guys get the point, right? Things are doing a lot better for Casper. He's got plenty of resources stacked up there, but unfortunately, it just doesn't translate over to score. So people don't really have a good idea of the threat that Casper is. But you can hear all those emplacements coming through now from Casper, going straight into cannon emplacements, not looking to get any of the stone upgrades either. And I think that's a smart move, honestly, from Casper to do that. Cannon emplacements, in my opinion, in the late game are busted. They're really good. They're so broken. Um, and part of the reason why is just because of that 100% AoE damage that they get. They get 100% of their damage applied to the units immediately next to them. And as a result, it means that they're very good at stopping raids. When horsemen try and come in and, and look to siege down this council hall, all of these outposts are going to fire down on a horseman that's in the middle. And it's going to kill all the horsemen around it. That's what makes them so damn strong. We'll do a bit of a landmark check and see where these guys are at. So we've got two landmarks for Casper. He's slowly rebuilding two. One landmark for Beastie. It's going to be in the back of his base. And Lash and Mister both still sit on four landmarks at this point in time. Beastie going to continue defending up against Lash. He's done a good job to take out the majority of the Springlots. There's only a handful that remain. A little bit of a fight continuing to push through here. But now it also looks like Mister might be coming through on the backside. It may be that he's hunting for that final landmark. Mister going to be running through. He spotted out the, the markets. He knows that there were traders. Sacred Sight, once again, going to be taken here, or neutralized, rather, by Casper. Hand Cannon is moving in at the front. Big Culver and Mass at the back. I don't I don't think... Uh, I don't think Mr. spotted that landmark at the backside. Make a wonder. It's easier to kill me that way, says Beastie. And you can see Beastie just playing... You know, really playing the long game here. We've actually got some trade over on this eastern side. So there is a trade post right along the edge of the map. Such a great trade post as well. This is incredibly good. If you, if you can get a, a market down here and start your trade route... Ooh, you would be in a prime position. The problem is, well, you got some outposts to deal with. You got some outposts to contend with. Uh, and unfortunately, this is going to be the best that Lash has got to deal with. So, look, it's not quite going to be what uh, what Casper's got over on the other side with 600 plus, or 600 plus rather, 300 plus uh, gold coming in. But it's still going to be decent. It's still going to be decent. Things cooling off for the moment. We'll ride on board with Mr. and see exactly how he's doing. Mister, with a whole ma mass of bombards here. He's just chilling out for the moment. Honestly, if Mister wanted to, he could 100% clean up both of these players. He could roll through Lash. He could roll through Beastie. He could collect three points and an additional three points up there as well, if he wanted to. Uh, but not doing that. Obviously, the biggest threat to him right now is Casper. But the problem is, he doesn't know how big of a threat Casper is because of the score. He still thinks Beastie is a reasonable threat. He knows Lash isn't such a big threat because of that score. We now enter the second hour of the game. A little bit of a stock take. We'll take we'll, we'll take away and, and look once again at how these players are doing. We... Oh, 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 
Oh, you guys saw that. You guys saw that. So we might have Casper and Mista who have decided, hey, we're going to continue working together. We saw them in the early game working together. We saw them look to take out Divine. Uh, it wasn't so much looking to take them out. It was rather that just Mister was putting on some pressure with an outpost down towards the south over here, this outpost in particular, and that Casper uh, was, was defending, or rather that Divine was defending. But at the same time, Divine was taken out. Knights, once again, going to be rallied towards this position, looking to take out more villagers. We'll look to see whether Mr. draws it to the attention of Casper, but Casper going to, going to pull those back. Beastie with a lot of walls up, though, which is pretty standard for him. Didn't manage to get this wall finished up the whole way. Things just chilling out for the moment. Lash going to be pushing in, though. Trebuchet is protected by the Springles. He sees the units coming out. A lot of culverin here. A lot of hand cannoneers on the back side. Camel archers as well. Streltsy going to be looking to defend this position. Bombard going to be careful. It's on the front side. Culverin going to be begin moving in. 11 culverin here going to be begin focusing it down. And it is just not even a contest. Beastie with the micro of a god. Comes in and looks to take out all these Springles. Barely even losing a single culverin. He does lose one in the end. But now those Streltsy, they're going to be up against difficult to match culverin range. That 12 range up against the only, the range of four. These culverin, they fire so damn quickly as well. Look at look at the, the, the rate of fire on these culverin. Honestly, I think Beastie might be onto something with this whole culverin mass. Because they're, they're incredibly good for defending. Nine culverin, I mean, they've got this crazy good range. They kill all siege. They, they kill pretty much everything, actually, when you think about it. The only thing they don't kill are buildings. So it's basically bombards that also kill other siege units. So basically Chinese bombards. <laughs> oh, gosh. A little bit of a run around up towards the north. Nothing too serious. Trebuchet is on the other side. Casper going to be breaking himself a little bit of a hole in the wall here. And looking to finish off somebody over in that corner. We don't know who it's going to be yet. Now, Casper's got a couple of options that he can go for here as well. One of the things he can look to do. I wonder if he can build on these. You, you can't select them. So I'm thinking you might be able to. So one of the options he's going to have is, is looking to potentially drop down a wonder up here. I, I suspect if he's going to do it, he would do it back here. But interestingly, he hasn't he hasn't chopped through this yet. All right, players now looking to, to chat it out a little bit. We can see Lash up there just saying beastie. 50 years of war are enough. <laughs> oh, do you, do you think he's going to be going for like some sort of snipe or something? Let's be friends, says Lash. Mm -mm -mm. That ain't the way it works, sister. That ain't the way it works. Let's see. <laughs> Beastie responds, why? Are they killing you now? Exactly. Beastie knows what's up. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Kas Look at the mister in the chat saying, let's kill them, Casper. See, but we know the truth. We know the truth. <laughs> we know the truth. The truth of these bombards right here, and they are rolling in. Beastie says, okay, you can delete keeps facing me and I will trust you. So we've got one keep over here. One keep here. Let's see if he deletes them. Mister, don't fight. I need one sacred site for deal. For deal? Oh, oh, okay. I see what we've got going on here. Okay, take. Look at this. We got ourselves a little bit of a team, but now the Streltsy are going to be moving in. Bombard's going to be careful. They move immediately. The Magadar are going to be running in here as well. Mister going to be trying to hold on and prevent these Bombards from going down. It doesn't look like he's got the... Uh, it, it, I don't think he's got the movement speed upgrade for these bad boys. These guys are going really slow. Bombard's slowly but steadily turning around. Springwood's focusing them down. You can see them trying their best to get through all of that hardened shell. But for some reason, the, the Streltsy have turned around. <laughs> Scared of the Magadar? What's wrong with you, Streltsy? Turn around. You guys were fine. Looks like he's bought a little bit of space there. Springles on the backside. Could look to snipe out that Khan. You can see it's down to 38 health here. Mister going to be continuing to push forward. A couple of trebuchets here. And now Beastie on the north side. Does he look to posture? No, it's going to be Casper looking to posture. We can see he's pushing in. Look at the night numbers now for Casper. This is impressive late game stuff from him. Sitting on 92 knights. 68 economic units. In fact, where are Casper's economic units? Oh my god, he's only got traders. Casper only has traders right now. 68 traders. Casper is the absolute giga chad right now of this game. He's got 150 knights in queue. 40,000 food in the bank. He's like, eh, I think we're good for now. I love it, Casper. It is Casper is 100% my MVP for this game. He is just... The fact that he took the 2v1, the way that he's just played this game is beautiful. Honestly, I love it. 
Drowsy now shredding through those Mangadai as they continue running in. Mister's going to get some more production to reinforce this. You can see how long the run is all the way back over here. In the middle of the map, it looks like Mister is chasing down. He's got the Streltsy there that's following a couple of these knights. They're using the same reinforcement point in the center. And you can see the Beastie actually going for a rewall here. I think it might be Casper, actually. I think Casper's going for the rewall here. Push now coming through. It looks like Casper as well as Mister are going to be teaming up to take down Lash. Looking to take out the weaker of the players. Now, one thing to note is that Casper is not in a position to drop down that Wonder. But Mister will be. Mister currently sitting on 12,000 of every resource, at least, except for that stone. It's on 10,000. Uh, so he's got plenty of resources in the bank as well. Try pushing Casper's back. Now I'm super dead, says Lash. Yeah, Lash, you are super dead. It is going to be a 2v1 over here. So Casper getting in on the bit of the teaming action. He's, do he's done the 1v2, and now it's time for the 2v1 with that landmark. Going to be going down. It's the Golden Gate. Second landmark. It is going to be focused down. I think it's going to be in the back of the base. He's coming straight for that high trade house. And you can see the Casper is just intent on sniping these bad boys out. A lot of units here. Now, one of the things that works really well against all of these units bunched up nice and closely, it is cannon emplacement on these outposts. But the problem is, playing as the Rus, you do not have access to it. The best you can do is a sprinkled emplacement. That is the best that you can get. Now we see that high trade house going to be going down. Two landmarks going down, and Casper, his name is going to be on both of those bad boys. Third landmark going to be going down as well. It's that town center. And then finally, that high armory. And you can see Beastie posturing as well. Maybe Beastie's thinking a little bit about it. Now, keep in mind those Culverin, nowhere near as strong as Bombards against these buildings. So even if he tries for a bit of a snipe, he's going to need more than that. And now finding the Khan has gone down. And with that, I suspect GG will be called any second. That's just a meme, guys. Don't worry. But now it looks like we might have a bit of friendly fire here. I think Casper's woken up to it. And he said, hold on a minute. That's not what I want. I think Casper might need to find a new route because he's taking a lot of damage as he runs across here. And that's, that's not a good thing. Beastie moving in, looking to defend against Lash. I think Beastie might realize that, that Lash is, uh, is his only way into this game because if, Beastie, if, if L Beastie loses Lash right now, he's got no one that he can rely on. Lash is the one guy who's been by your side quite literally this entire game. Yeah, he might have been stabbing him half of the time, but it's still he's by your side. It looks like they've let him live for a little bit longer. The high armory, the main town center remain. The high trade house has gone down as well as the golden gate. So two landmarks remain for Lash. And now those knights look to turn upon Beastie. He says, Beastie, you've been, you've been trouble all game, Beastie. Now I'm going to take you out. He doesn't really say that, but Culver on the backside. Look at these. Ba I think Beastie's just going to shred this. Honestly, Beastie's army, is so, the composition is so good. I, I love it. The, the spears, the hand cannoneers, the camel archers, the horsemen. Just like everything he's got. And obviously, like the, 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 the cherry on the top here is the culverin. The culverin are just so beautiful. Uh, very effective. And you can see Beastie just cleaning this up completely. Sure, he might lose a culverin or two. But uh, now Casper is on him. You can even see Casper in the chat saying, where are the TC, man? Beastie cleans it up completely. So great little defense there from Beastie. Destroy Lash's landmark. Indeed, the landmark now goes down. It's going to be that high armory. Golden Gate looking to get repaired. You can see a lot of villagers here. So Mister now turning his attention towards Lash. And we might have another 2v1 on our hands here. Uh, because after Lash gets knocked out, I suspect Beastie is going to be the, the next player in the in line or in queue. You can see that Mister's done a great job at fortifying this central sacred site here. So he knows that no one's going to be able to take it other than him. The new Khan has risen. And Lash is back to... I think that's two landmarks now. We'll have a look and see. He might be going to repair the high trade house as well. More knights running in. Keep in mind, he's playing as the English. They don't get any cost discount on their knight. So he's going to be paying full price for this. But he had a lot of knights in queue. We'll take a look and see. He's got he's got just a casual 242 knights in queue. A couple of Reboldequin as well. But remember, playing with the Reboldequin, I mean, it's not going to be that effective just because of the amount of culverin that are out here from Beastie. So you really got to ask the question whether it, it becomes worth it to make those Reboldequin. But remember, he's got a lot of traders. In fact, 68 traders right now. Nice. Almost. But not quite. Another defense looking to come in. Lash really holding on for dear life here. And it, it's definitely been a case of, you know, in, in these free-for-alls, one of the things that you often see are uh, players who get involved in early fights are stuck behind. So as an example, we saw Puppy Paw... And we saw um, Snooper get involved with Kaio early. And they looked to team up and take him down. But Casper, who hadn't been in a fight, 
then look to take down both of them. Now we're seeing two players, Lash and Beastie, who have been locked in a fight for a long time, now get taken out by Casper once again. So the story to me really seems to be, it's about picking your battles and making sure that you've got the right battles, but it, it's important, it's incredibly important that when you do have them, they're swift battles, that they are decisive battles. Because if they're not, you, you the problem that you have is that you get stuck in this endless battle. And now it looks like Beastie's going to be turning upon his ally, his neighbor, Lash. The final landmark, the, that is the question. Where is that final landmark? The high trade house is down. The Golden Gate is back up. The High Armory is back up. And the main town center is still up. And Lash going to be looking to defend here. A lot of spearmen moving out. Hand Cannon is going to be firing off. He's got a beautiful little composition here. Horseman looking to move back. He's ideally wanting to turn those bad boys around. Culverin going to be careful here. Fortunately, it looks like Beastie going to be turning around as well. Or rather, Lash going to be turning around as well. And everybody just goes back to the drawing board. But it definitely seems like Lash right now, he is the gazelle being ripped apart by the lions. And it is only a matter of time until that... Well, yeah, the legs come off the torso. <laughs> oh, that's that's kind of gross. Uh, but yeah, uh, right right now, <laughs> I mean, what, what are the legs as so far? The high trade house. Uh, maybe we go three versus one. It should be easier. <laughs> Lash calling them out. A lot of knights down here to the south. You can see Lash holding on for dear life. We'll check in with his resources and see how he's doing. 114 population. Things not doing too good. Maybe we go three versus one on Beastie, he said. Oh, okay. I, I see where he's going with that. But now Beastie coming around the back. Going to be clearing up those traders towards the north. We've got Casper, uh, who is over here down at the south. At the same time, we've got Casper, who is looking to come through. And the question is, where is the Mister right now? Because Mister has... I got no idea where Mister's army is. I, I know it is somewhere. The question is just where? What is it doing? Casper looking to, to take down the town centers here. Prevent any sort of rebuilding coming through. Now looking to focus down the archery ranges as well. Beastie at the same time from the top side. Looking to force this issue out. We see the landmarks are slowly but steadily going down. Three still remain. We'll get the landmark tracker up. You can see right there. Three landmarks still remain here. Lash. Being, being ripped apart here. Slowly losing his base. He's been holding on for so damn long, and now it looks like the knights are going to be coming in from the south side as well as on the top side. A lot of spearmen in here as well. Beastie's going to be able to spot that one out. A lot of line of sight on these units. And now looking to try and come in, you can see the Beastie begins to focus down the main town center. Keep in mind the Golden Gate and the High Armory do stand strong behind this. But with that, the town center going to be going down, and Beastie definitely going to be claiming that one. With that town center going down... The, the remaining army here for Lash is, is slowly but steadily holding on. You can see he's done a great job at defending against this, but the problem's going to be Beastie. His army is a very robust army. He's got a lot of good units in there, great composition, and now it becomes a battle of two landmarks. And the question is whether Lash looks for another repair down here to the south. Springwood emplacement firing off at those camel riders. Really nice composition here from Beastie. Definitely a lot, a, a lot more, uh, a lot more flexible than the the knights of Casper. Quite literally, the knights of Casper. Quite literally, only the knights from Casper. He is a man who knows how to make one unit, knights only. And I'll be honest, I like it. Casper has unfortunately run out of food, uh, and with that, <laughs> he's now like, mm, maybe I should have just kept like a couple of villagers, just in case. I needed like a little bit more food. He's got 164 knights on the way though. So like things aren't going terribly for him. Uh, but now Rebaldequin going to be coming out. Now Rebaldequin, we'll take a look at the range that it's got. 3.75. So it actually gets outranged by the Streltsy. I think the Streltsy's got a range of 4.5. Four. So the Streltsy outranges it by 0.25. So not a huge amount, but at the same time, still it outranges it. And of course the Springle's going to be more than enough to put a nail in the coffin of the Rebaldequin. So we'll see exactly how well it does. But I'm looking forward to it. And now Mr. Hey, mister. Hey, mister. Where are you going with all those Mangadai, mate? Have we got ourselves another backstab on our hands? Siege have moved up. Mangadai moving forward and looking to clear out a couple of these knights here. A lot of damage on these knights, honestly. He's moving up towards the north. The trade is ongoing. 293 for Casper. Push coming in. Beastie looking to try and take out a couple of these landmarks. First landmark and second landmark are still down on the south side. Two landmarks remain at the moment for Lash. He's holding on right now. He is defending with with immense power and strength. Honestly, I'm impressed. Casper turns the attention towards the production buildings. Beastie on the north side. Lash still holding on. Right on board with Lash for a little bit longer. 
He's made it up to 146 population. 15 Streltsy in the queue. I don't know where he's getting these resources from. Still losing plenty of production. How, how, how many knights are we talking right there? 70 knights. Up, up against almost full Springle... Uh, up against almost sp full Spearman and, uh, and Streltsy, which is the perfect combination against these knights. I don't know where those Mangan eyes have gotten to. They might be moving across the map. They're not. A little bit of a battle. Beginning to unfold outside the base of Lash. More reinforcements come in. That's 79 knights now. And it might be that we ha are going to be seeing the death here of Lash. He's trying his best to hold on. But that third landmark is going to be going down. And now all of the knights moving in towards that last landmark. It's going to be the Golden Gate that immediately gets Siege. Reboldaquin on the backside as well. Lash going to be going down here. I don't think there's any way that he holds on this. Just way too much. It doesn't look like any of those landmarks have gotten up. Beastie not going to be in contention for this last landmark. And the three points going to be going over to the mister, rather, to Kasper. Once again, Kasper is cleaning house here. That is going to be his third kill of the game here. He took out Snooper. He took out Puppypaw. And now he takes out Lash. Three of them. And the mister is building a wonder. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. The Mongols are going to Paris. I don't know why they're going to Paris, but uh, they are building a wonder. That is for sure. It is going to be the great, the great monument of the Khan. Actually, the monument of the Great Khan. So, Mister is now going to look to defend 2v1 here against Casper and against Beastie. And the question is, where does Casper go? Because Casper ideally wants to go to Beastie because he knows I can kill Beastie, I can get three points, and then I can guarantee that I get second position. Now, there's already a pretty good chance that he gets second position. He's done a lot of killing this game. But the question is whether he actually gets the victory because the victory is going to give him an extra couple of points. In fact, I think it's an extra six points. Just a casual 96 villagers building up the wonder. Nothing big. A few idols in here as well. Still takes a while to get up. Magadai moving towards the north. Mr's, Mr's wonder has been complete. Now, Mr knows that there is trade on going. And so he's running straight towards that trade line. He's looking to interrupt it. We can see him attacking lumber camps. Kasper, he made a wonder just for your information. Look at Kasper. Kasper just like... Kasper's still working on Beastie. At this point, honestly, Casper's got so many units. Beastie hasn't rebuilt the main town center yet. Beastie still is running on one landmark. 28,000 health. I wonder if he could take that down if he wanted to. It looks like Casper is going to be playing the game here. He's going to realize, well, hold on a minute. There is a wonder in play. Maybe I should do something. Mangadai up towards the north going to be interrupting all of this trade. You can see the traders just going down nonstop. A couple of the Mangadai just chilling out here, beginning to focus down those traders. At the same time, running down the trade line, we've got more Magadai. So all the trade from Kasper is going to be interrupted. You can see now, at the moment, he sits on 72 economy units. Three Bombards, three Trabs in queue, a Mangadel, a Mangadel in queue. I was going to say a Mangadel, like a Mangadai and a Mangadel in one. Now, that, that is something I'd like to see. But up towards the north, those traders continue. Trying to hold on. More Knights here. Elite Lancers as well. You could wallow all these bad boys. Inter inter interesting. Interesting interesting strategy i don't know what the what the plan is for that one but uh you keep doing you fella magadite continuing to move forward these guys are going to be causing havoc all game there's going to be no no more trade that's going to be coming out here unless you're able to get some some sort of like stone wall around all of this it's not going to be happening the monument of the great Khan is up we'll get our timers out and we'll check exactly where we're up to 13 minutes and 20 seconds to go so we'll call it about one minute one hour and 30 minutes is is roughly our timer for it Knights now looking to clear out the center, and it could be Casper going for a bit of a sacred site victory, potentially. Looking to try and cut the wonder off, because that's always going to be a potential play. And now we can hear those bombard emplacements coming off, or those cannon emplacements. Look at the damage that comes down towards these English knights. Mangadai going to be coming through as well. Big charge is going to be coming out. A couple of Mangadai already going down, and you can see this round coming through. He's doing a great job of cleaning out these outposts as well. There's so many outposts, though. We're right on board. I want, I want to take a look and see exactly how many outposts we're talking for the mister right now. Because it is going to be a lot. We'll grab this villager here. 353 outposts for our Mongol player. That is a lot of outposts. That is a huge amount of outposts. He's got them stretching the entire map on this south side. He is a man who likes outposts. That is for sure. Sacred site being neutralized slowly but steadily. Cleaning out all of the infrastructure that is here. Keep in mind, the Mongols, no walls available to them. So it means that it's going to be harder for him to hold on to these sacred sites. Uh, but he is going to be able to build outposts. Look at the cannon emplacements now coming through for the mister. All right. Well, it seems like Casper has said, uh, I, I want this sacred site. Now, 
I wonder what the plan is behind this. Bombard going to be coming through here as well. Now, this keep that stands very strong. Remember, this was once a keep that was owned by Snooper. But now it looks like our battle begins between our two titans, Casper and the Mister. Mister up by 16,000 score at this point in time. He's got a lot of resources in the bank. Could it be the Mister's first professional free-for-all game is a victory? That is what we are potentially looking at right now. The question was, where would Mr. finish? Would he finish in the top three? And the answer is a resounding yes. He has finished in the top three. And the Khan goes down. Mr. might be in a little bit of trouble here. You may hear good game called out any second with that Khan going down. Things not looking good now for the Mr. More raids coming in. Bombard emplacements or cannon emplacements continuing to fire off up towards the north. We hear that Mr. is under attack. Those Mangadai could be taken out by the emplacements on those outposts. Continue to see units just streaming across the map. Knight on Mangadai action. Elite Mangadai are going to be trying their best to take out these knights. But unfortunately, I feel like in these numbers where it just becomes almost impossible to micro, it, it can be very difficult. But we can see that still he's managing to pull back these Mangadai. He's going to be running into a wall down here to the south, though. He's going to be careful not to box himself in. More cannon emplacements coming through now for Mister. And this whole time, this whole time, there's one man. There's one man over in the corner who just enjoys it all. He just loves it all. He laps it up. He says, this is perfect. This is exactly what I want. I've found myself a little bit of space. I've got walls up to protect myself. I'm A-OK. -okay. Everything is looking good. Everything is fine. Everything is dandy right now. The beast remains asleep for now. As the two titans look to battle it out over on this north shore and the south shore, Beastie looks to try and add in a little bit of damage on the south side. And now it seems like up towards the north, the sac first sacred site was taken. Sacred site now going to be looking to get taken here as well for Casper. We'll ta have a quick look at the wonder tracker. It's going to be 10 minutes and two seconds. So even if he gets the wonder capture off, it's not going to matter. Those sacred sites are going to be too late. The sacred site counter is going to take 10 minutes. Mister, his wonder tracker is 15 minutes. It's been up for more than five minutes now. And with that... Mister is going to have the victory if Casper is unable to take it. We see that Sacred Sight victory will be approaching us very, very soon. There it is. But it may be too late. Now, remember, in the event that this... Oh, my. Oh, oh my. Oh, my. <laughs> Good luck getting through that. Look at the outpost. Endless outpost for years, for days. And it into just so much production. Is there any way that you can get through this? I don't know, man. I don't know. Beastie's going to try, though. That's for sure. A lot of bombards out here as well. Things not looking good right now for the for uh, Casper and for Beastie. Mister, on the other hand, looking great. Now, remember that that sacred site victory. It will still count if they are able to take out the if they are able to take out the monument of the Great Khan. But if they're not able to take that out, and now we can see Beastie actually coming over here and saying, hey, uh, yeah, can you not do that, please? Uh, I'm just going to stop you nice and easily here. We're, we're just going to start easy. We're going to deal with the Sacred Sight victory first. Let's get that out of the way. And then we'll move on to the main, the main issue. Now, the problem that he's going to have is that as these units come into this choke point, they're going to get taken out. Oh, does he not have emplacements? Spring on emplacement there. This one here? Okay, yeah. So the cannon emplacements that are on these outposts are going to... This is where they really shine. These cannon emplacements deal that AoE damage. So as these units clump up in the choke point, that is where they're going to excel. Well, things are looking good at the moment on this north side. Now, Beastie... I, I mean, uh, Casper still yet to actually push onto this south side. Sacred Sight has been neutralized. So that win condition is, is gone out the window, even if Casper wanted to try and hold that. I don't even think he was really trying to contest it anymore now that he knew that he doesn't have a chance to win with it. And we can see now the players in the chat are typing too many towers. Too many towers. And now the battle unfolds. Mangadai up against the Camel Archers. Who is the victor? A keep going to be coming up here as well for Beastie. He's going to be trying his best to, to put the nail in the coffin. But unfortunately, the Bombard's going to be coming out nice and early and looking to take that down. Mistai has been awoken and he is looking damn well impressive right now. Look at the Mangadai and the numbers that they've got. Just move past these Camel Archers. They say, see you later, mate. I'm going to take you out. And we don't see any sort of cohesive push coming out from Beastie as well as Casper. They've not looked to push at the same time on, on the same side or on different sides or anything like that because over towards the north, we've got more defense coming in and and Mister is just looking absolutely impressive in, in this game. In his first free-for-all in the professional scene right now, he was stepping in for Vortex. 
he looks like he might actually pull off a victory here for Vortex. Vortex can be very happy with that. His stand-in able to provide pretty damn decent performance, if I do say so myself. What an absolute show here from the mister. But, I mean, to be honest, looking at this, Casper has been really an incredible player throughout this game. The fact that he was able to take down the alliance in the north that looked likely to win. You know, if Casper wasn't able to do that, that looked like it would have been an alliance all the way to the end. Those guys would have tried to kill the entire lobby, I suspect. And it really just goes to show that, you know, you don't don't mess with Casper. Don't mess with Casper. He is, he is brutal. He is brutal. Let's ride on board right now with Mr. See where he's at. Mr. at the moment, he's got 42 Mangadai in, in the queue. Two elite Lancers. He's got six villagers at the moment, three of which are idle. One, two, three. Uh, and one that's on wood. Because why not? That's going to be it for him. Everything else is military units. He's got 194. He is defending. He's got bombards back here. Now, there's no chance of any drop happening as well. You can see there's way too many bombards out, or way too many uh, outposts out here. I don't think there's any way that these guys are getting through this. this. This is just, this is looking insane. We'll check in on the Wonder Tracker. Five minutes and 57 to go right now for the Mister. Uh, so Mister going to be once again holding on this choke point. And you can see that there's really, it, it becomes almost impossible. <laughs> like, these guys aren't even over his side of the river yet. Let's, let's say hypothetically that you make it through all of these outposts. Let's say hypothetically you make it through all the outposts. Yeah, good luck. All right. Well, I'll see you guys in five minutes uh, when Mr. is crowned the champion because I can't see any way these guys are going to be able to take it off him. But nonetheless, we'll watch. We'll wait. We'll see exactly what happens because Beastie is building up a bit of a forward base here. At the same time, over on the west side, though, Casper. I mean, wh where is Casper's army at this point? You know what? You know, oh, my. Oh, my God. You know what it is? The fact that Casper deleted all those villages earlier to kill Beastie and to kill Lash and things didn't work out for him. I think that's it, right? Like, surely that's got to be it. The fact that his economy, it was sort of... I wouldn't say it was downhill, but it was definitely fell off a cliff, didn't it? And now, all of a sudden... I mean, he's, he's got the traders back out. He's got 53 traders that are active, but... When you're playing as Mister right now... mister has got 200 military pop. But it's not just 200 military pop. He's got 300 plus outposts. Sacred sites are now all taken again, once again, for Kasfa. Uh, let's have a look and see. We've got the village account. Uh, still six, 194, but uh, that uh, 297 outposts at the moment. So he's got less than 300 outposts. I feel like that's a decent amount of outposts. You know, any any anything less than 250 outposts, and it's like, eh, you know, those are rookie numbers. You know, you gotta kind of, you gotta ramp those numbers up. That that's that's what I think it is, right? Like this is just it, it's kind of insane. Maybe people, you know what? Now that I think about it, Mongols are becoming more and more S tier. The, the more I see Mongols play out in these games, honestly, the more I think they are S tier. Just because they have the ability to have infinite stone throughout this game. We hear the relics getting picked up right now. That's Mr. picking up relics. He's bringing out his relics in case... Oh my god. Oh my god. He's defending his monument of the Great Khan with relics. The ultimate defense of the monument of the Great Khan right here. It is the religious defense. It is something of beauty, something we are yet to witness. If anybody tries to run by, you know, a whole bunch of knights, say, as an example, well, I got some bad news for you. Because even if you make it to the finish line, unfortunately, we got problems. We got problems. And let's see exactly how he goes for it as he now begins to move through. We'll ride on board with Kaspar as he looks to try and take down that wonder. 108 Lancers or Knights going to start us off here. He continues to move through, pushing down towards this direction at the same time over towards the east. The Bombards as well as the Mangadai are going to be looking to block up this choke point. Beastie's still stuck in a little bit of a difficult position. Three minutes until wonder defeat. And now 108 L Knights comes down to 98. He's lost 10 so far. He continues to move through. The emplacements on these, bomb on these outposts will continue to bombard him. At the same time, more and more of these Mangadai looking to try and take down these knights. You can see they've got their torches out. They are heading in one direction. They're going to be going through the pastures down towards this position. We can hear the emplacements firing off as Beastie tries to break through the shoreline over on the east side. But remember, those, those extra AoE coming out from the outpost are really going to be dishing out the damage. And now we've got ourselves a little bit of a traffic jam. Casper going to be getting stuck. He's found a way around. The White Stupa going to be able to open it up a little bit there. He's down to 56 knights. He's trying his best to get through here. But unfortunately for him, the numbers are beginning to shrink. 
The question is whether he's going to be able to make it to the Monument of the Great Khan. And even if he does, well, I got bad news for him because he's only down to 34. The blocking of the bodies continues. Mister just putting on an absolute clinic over towards the east. Things have been shut down. Two minutes until one to defeat right now. And the Wallalo number one comes off looking to be a little bit preemptive in its defense and the whole night push gets shut down completely. They don't even reach the monument of the Great Khan. You ain't touching this bad boy. And Mister will be crowned your champion in this game. Two minutes to go. There is no way they are breaking this at all. This is just impressive. Honestly, I see this and I'm like, you know what? Mongols, S tier. Honestly, Mon like I'm watching this. Mongols, S tier in FFA. This is impressive. This, like, how do you stop this? I, I feel like at this point, you would the only thing that can stop this is Chinese bombards. Because the, the, why, why are Chinese bombards the only thing that can stop this? So, Chinese bombards have a range of 12. They also have a much higher DPS than trebuchets. Now, you could, you could have a thousand trebuchets out, but the problem is they're very slow, cumbersome. Here, these outposts, they've got 10, 10 tiles of range. So these bombards that everybody else is using, they've only got 10 tiles of range, which means they trade with the outpost. Whereas the Chinese bombards, they've got that extra range. They don't trade with it anymore. They actually just kill them. So the Chinese bombard allows you to break this position. Now, obviously you're going to have trouble getting through this, but China would be a very strong counter in this position. Also, Grenadiers would be really, really good in the late game. But I guess maybe we only see Mongols shine when there's no China around to, to keep them down. So we'll have to we'll have to keep that tier list in our back, back pocket. But, but at, at this moment, we're going to have to throw up a plaque on the wall for all the other Mongol victories because there is another one that is going to have to come right in. It's going to be the mister. He's going to be your victor here today, ladies and gentlemen. There is no way that these players are going to be pushing him off. Short of a delete of this, of this wonder coming out, mister will be crowned your champion. And with that, a big shout out goes to all of our players today. We've had a beautiful game today. We saw Divine go out early. We saw Kaio go out early. We saw Lash finally lose. And we saw Snooper and Puppy Paw get taken down by Casper. But in the end, there were three. And in the end, the victory went to the one, the only, the Mister. Congratulations, big Mister. What an absolute pleasure it was to witness this game. 300 of the world's finest outposts coming in strong. Good game, well played. Fellas, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you check out Snooper. He was providing us that beautiful little chat that you can see up the top right-hand corner because, of course, we cannot see the chat in-game uh, in replays uh, because it's 2022 and the technology is just not there for it yet. Uh, but uh, we'll take a look at some of the stats. I, I want to take a look at that total resource count. That's the big one right there because this doesn't necessarily translate over to score. And that is really what tells you the story here. It is this total resource count, Mr. Climbing up to 150,000. We take a look at score. I mean, he was ahead in score, but only by a slight amount. You can see that Casper was keeping up with him. So things didn't look that crazy. But in the end, Mr. was victorious. We'll take a look at the units killed as well, just to get an idea of who came second and who came third. So Beastie with 901 units killed. Casper with 1,500 units killed. Mr. 1,200. So Casper going to be taking your second place here today. Beastie making it through to the end. Once again, congratulations to all of our players here. Thank you for watching on YouTube, and we'll catch you guys in the next one.